Hello, this is Brother Cromar, and this is a continuation of Lesson 20 dealing with Test of Independence. And so here's the second problem dealing with Test of Independence, and this was found in the online textbook. A study was conducted to determine why patients seek chiropractic care. Okay, So patients were classified based on their motivation for seeking treatment. Using descriptions developed by Green and, and Cruder, patients were asked of which of the five reasons led them to seek chiropractic care. And here are the five reasons, wellness, preventative care, at risk, sick role, and self-care. If you want to stop the video, you can read through these to see what those five definitions mean. So down below here, the data from the study are summarized in the following contingency table. So here, here we have three different, um, three different locations, Europe, Australia, and the United States, and five different motivations as, I, as, we're ex as are explained up here. Now the beauty of the test of independence is notice here that we have more than two categories for my row, our row variable and more than two categories for our column variable. So this is, so as I mentioned before, two proportion tests, we could not do this, but with the test of independence we could. So the research question down below here was whether people's motivation for seeking chiropractic care was independent of their location, Europe, Australia, or the United States, using a level of significance of alpha equal to 0.05. So then, let's go through the six steps. If you want to stop, in fact, let me go back to this. If you want to stop the recording and go through this on your own, type in your data, whether it's Excel or SPSS, you can do that. Okay. So let's go through the six steps. So step number one is state the null and alternative hypotheses. So the null is that location and motivation for chiropractic care are independent. The alternative is location and motivation for chiropractic care are not independent. Okay. So steps two, steps three, and steps four we can get that uh, from either Excel or SPSS. Okay, and so let's. So what I'm going to show you here is the output that I have from SPSS, which will be similar to Excel. So this here is our test statistic, 49.743. Here's our degrees of freedom. If you remember, it's the number of rows minus one times the number of columns minus one. And then this here is our p-value, which is which is close to zero. Okay, so steps two, three, and four. And since our p-value is less than alpha we would reject the null hypothesis. And since we do reject the null, we therefore have sufficient evidence to say that, and then we go to the alternative, that location motivation, or lo location and motivation for chiropractic care are not independent. And so the, those are the six steps for test of independence, okay? Now the last, uh, last item is checking requirements and descriptive statistics. So checking requirements, um, is basically that all the expected counts are greater than or equal to five, okay? So, um, so that's the restriction, even though we can have as many rows, as many columns as we want, but in order to do a, do a test of independence, we need to have all those expected counts being greater than or equal to five, okay? Now, similar to Excel, SPSS has um, output that we can check that. And what we do is we look at the expected counts and we don't look at the totals at all. We only look at within the meat of the table, okay? The expected counts, we look at 15 expected counts here. And it looks like that all these expected counts are greater than five, okay? And it's a good, and it's a good, if, if you know the all your reserve counts are greater than five within each of those cells, it's a good, it's, it's likely that all your expected counts will be greater than five as well too, okay? So the requirement in this example is met. Also in the previous example that we did with, uh, with gender versus label use, the expected counts are up here. It looks like the requirements are met. Okay, so then the descriptive statistics you can either do pie charts or bar graphs, and it's similar to doing two proportion pie charts or bar graphs. And what I have here is just I have a couple of bar charts or bar is this is from the men uh, versus label use or men, excuse me gender versus label usage. And so here's an example of a bar chart that's side by side where you have the men here uh, described with the two two bars here and then the women okay where where the green represents yes and and the blue represents no and a similar bar chart uh, down below is where we have the five the three different locations and then the five different categories the five different uh, reasons or motivations for seeking chiropractic care for each of those and those are examples of uh, bar charts you can also do uh, similarly you can do pie charts as well and so that concludes the Lesson 20 video for dealing with tests of independence.